a lot of these, these female empowerment or feminist podcasts, they're destroying women because they clearly have been hurt. They've been cheated on. They don't have anybody came out of bad relationships. And now they try to teach these ideals for women that you want a man, but you don't need a man. That's one of the, the one things that I'm, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot of is that women are trying to come into these relationships with, I want him to know that I'm with him because I want to be with him, but I don't need him. So that's, that's one area. And then it's the same exact thing on the other end with men, you're watching a lot of these guys are watching a lot of these red pill podcasts and are getting completely warped in their mind about what it means to be a man. And the, most of the, the, the leaders that are inside of these movements are men that you look at and they clearly don't get women. They clearly haven't been in long-term relationships, but yet they all spew out the same ridiculous talking points. Oh man, it's about, it's about getting fit. It's about, uh, showing women that, that, uh, you know, you going through women and, and they can be on Instagram and you can be on Instagram, but they can't because you're, you're the man, you're the leader. Like it's just a bunch of these false narratives about what it means to be a man at its core. That is really what it is for both of them is false narratives on what a real woman is. And then false narratives on what a real man is. And the leaders of these groups are the people that have been hurt the most. Oh, well, my man Nelson trying to kill Mr. Leko's business all the way out. I see. Oh, yo, I forgot about Mr. Leko. Oh, no, no, I'm, no. I'm no. Damn, you, you didn't got him started. I, I'm glad you reminded me about that because that's that's one of the things that I really have a, a problem with. Like, because you can listen to somebody talk and they clearly have no idea of what it means to be a man. Like you can literally watch this person on a podcast with another man and the other man is talking and talking about like how he operates in life. And if you gotta, and if the other guy co-signs with him, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we're high value men because yeah, cause, cause I, I tell women to just, to just close the mouth and, and, and sit down, they're lying. You've clearly been hurt. You have not had a long-term successful relationship. If you have failed at relationships and you clearly sound like somebody that people don't respect and don't listen to, you should not be on podcast teaching men. Actually, you shouldn't be teaching women how to keep men, let alone trying to give advice to men. It's the blind leading the blind. Nelson, thank you, thank you for reminding me about that. Nelson, why are you describing my exchanges with people? Oh, for, <laughs> <laughs> listen, that yo, that was killing me. I forgot, I, I forgot all about Mister Leko. The brother's not here. I, I ain't yeah. even talking about he, he, he ain't here. But if general you ever heard, listen, well, he he's welcome that's, to that's come up anytime he wants to. Space. I'll tell him to his face. Uh, if you ever heard me talk to anybody, he describing my exchanges with a lot of people. Yo, I don't, I don't like people. I, I really don't like people doing that because I'm looking at, I'm looking at young people. I'm looking at young men, like look like truly searching for like what real men are supposed to be like. So when I see a bunch of nonsense, like I'm going to call it out, whether they're in front of me or whether they're not in front of me, because at the end of the day, people are still getting misled. Yeah. Um, yeah, just. We want to make sure here on the panel, just out of respect, we just want to make sure if we address somebody directly, they're able to, to defend themselves directly. And I don't know if he's been invited or alerted of the panel. So that's all. So that that's for anybody in particular in any spaces, because I, that's for I do agree with you. And I think there's a lot of um, performing arts actors and um, thespians. There's a lot of thespians in the space. OK. Um, I uh with Keita wrote, hey Marcus, wasn't she there when we went to see them? Um, uh, wasn't she on stage with them? Yeah, she's dope. Yes, yeah, she was. I think uh <laughs> Marcus, yes, she was. I think uh, I don't have much to add on to what the sister was saying. I mean, obviously, there's some some things that she said that I didn't completely agree with, but I think women should check women, and I always applaud women checking women, and I step back and let women check women. However, when it comes to uh, brothers, I think James hit it like, 
out the park, man. Like people, we <laughs> with our observable eye, right? Sweeney, I agree with you. I'm the average man, right? I get up, I got well, I ain't gotta be to work tomorrow. I actually got the day off. But Thursday, I'm back up in that bit, right? Clock in, clock out. Right. So without observable eye, without looking at data, none of that shit, right? We can see communities <laughs> eradicated, families decimated. And then we come to spaces where people are encouraging you, uh, fuck these hoes. We don't need women. Women need us. Women, black women are bad. Uh, bonnet gang, da 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 da. Like, you don't know no good black women. Not one, not even the one that had you. Like you don't know no decent sisters. You ain't never been in a decent relationship. Everybody that took you up through there, everybody that ran you up through there. Like, damn, brother. Damn. Right? So I think um to James' point, man, uh, if you're looking for something, and the truth of the matter is, James, a lot of these young bloods are checking out. A lot of them. And I talk to my sons. They're good. You understand what I'm saying? Like, my, my sons are good, but when I talk to them about their friends, what's going on with their generation, because I'm always trying to understand. And a lot of these young bloods are checking out. A lot of it's because they don't see the benefit of building family because they don't see community, right? And then if you're telling me about building family and it results in me pairing up, pair bonding with a woman, which includes intimacy, what Marcus was alluding to, and I could get the what comes with intimacy for cheap. Why I got to commit to that when I can get the ass anyway? I can get head. I can get the ass seven ways to Sunday. I can get her to make me a meal, send her ass home, all that, right? So as the OGs in space, and I always say this, this has been my new mantra, Generation X fucked up. We dropped the ball on a lot of shit and all that shit. All this is happening on our watch. And so it's imperative that the good brothers that are in good relationships dealing with good women, Niggas got to start speaking up and speaking out, man. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas that are married in the game, still playing around like, I mean, married out of the game, still playing around like they in the game. Right? Nigga, you married. The fuck you talking about? I could pull this when they pull that when I could do this. You out the game, bro. Damn. Right. You out the game. Move around with that goofy talk, man, because somebody just sent that super chat saying, how we send these confusing messages to youngest and trust and believe they looking at everything y'all say and do. I told my uncle plenty of times, man. Yeah, I remember when y'all used to woo woo ba ba ba. I'm not talking about my memory go. My clearest memory goes back to uh being to five years old. I'll be fifty in August, right? My clearest memory of me being a youngster goes back to five years old. I'm spitting shit back to him. He's like, damn, you remember that? Yeah. And you think they ain't looking at us and seeing the shit we say that's immortalized on these YouTube streets? And throwing that shit right back up in your face. Hey, don't we be hearing that shit? That's this why we don't fuck with y'all old heads. This is why we don't listen to y'all old niggas. One minute we telling them, get married, and then we say, no, nah, marriage is a bad deal. The fuck? <laughs> make that make sense. You, you yeah, know you what gonna it get is? through the cleaners because you know she she stand to take 50% of your shit. And stop telling men they ain't got nothing to take. Nigga, you ain't got nothing to take. <laughs> Sorry, man. You know what it is though, is because we're we're and, and it's the same thing we accuse women of, right? We talk about how women always want it all. They want one side of this and they want the other. Well, the problem is we do that shit too. We talk about how women have changed, times have changed, everything is fucking changed, but we still trying to hold on to old shit too. And that's why we wind up telling these dudes like you're gonna lose half your shit. Well, nigga, if you and the chick built the shit together, there ain't nothing to lose. But if she walk away, she walk away with her shit. You walk away with your shit. That's the reality. And that's how most marriages go. If I, When I go and actually talk to real married people, my family, other married couples, and you watch them, you observe them, they align with regular shit. But then you get on these YouTube streets and it's, oh, no, you got to beat your chest for the internet. You got to tell everybody how... It ain't going down like this in my like. Come on, bro. I get it. That may be for you, but who are you talking to? And and honestly, cause and this is the thing, cause man, he had this conversation on Sunday, and I wrote him in the back chat. I said, "There's a reason why I was asking you those questions. Is because we're talking to a totally different group of people, 
And so when if you're telling us that this is what goes on for you, then how do you handle it? Because for them, it may not go the same way. And especially we see the women. I the women all on the panel, we sitting there on this panel with all these women, and all these women telling you they ain't rocking with it. But we're gonna tell these men you need to nail their ass to the wall. See the your way or the highway. And you're dealing with a completely autonomous woman who lives in a totally different time from where we came from. And I ain't even saying me because I'm I'm a millennial. But like we talking about a a, a, a time of a, we don't live the same lives. They're not living the same lives. So we have to see the world through their eyes and tell them how to adjust. Yep, on these YouTube screens, it's like everybody got a 40-year pension. Everybody got a multiple properties and stuff to take away. And I'm like, yo, like I've been through a divorce before. She didn't take none of my shit. I been, so I was like, yo, like, and I made sure that um that that I, I had my stuff in order. Got custody of my son. So like it's all this type of stuff. If if you actually just do the research behind it and and uh, make sure you you putting yourself at a, a better situation. I'm in a way better situation than I was my first time because I got married at 19. You know what I mean? I got married at a real young age and I was trying to, you know what I mean, do I learned a lot of bad habits from my mom and stuff like that and stuff. So I was going on with that and then I learned better. You know what I'm saying? So from from being married, you know what I mean? So a lot of this this stuff is just fear mongering and, and oh, this is going to happen. This is going to, no, just make, all right, cool. You messed up right here. You go do it better. Just like when you was a kid riding your bike, you fail. You didn't just say, all right, throw the bike away. No, you got back up, got back on the motherfucker. And then you kept going. 